In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can set up Apollo GraphQL in our project. First, let's go to our settings. You can write plugins because I think it's easier like that. And in the plugins folder, we can just search for GraphQL. Let's install this plugin. After you do, let's type GraphQL inside of the search and we can see languages and frameworks and click on the GraphQL. Over here on the frameworks part, just check Apollo Kotlin and click OK. Now let's go to our project and in our Gradle file, we are going to go to the dependencies and implement the Apollo runtime. In this project, we'll need only this one, but in the future tutorials, we will implement more of the Apollo stuff. Then go at the top and we need to add Apollo GraphQL, Apollo 3, because we're using this version and then the version of Apollo. Now, when we have this setup, what we need to do next is we can check below our Android scope, we have another one, which is Apollo specific scope. And this one, we're going to be setting it up so it's easier for us when we want to download the schema. So what we're essentially creating here is a Gradle function that will just be running from over here. And if we go to the Gradle, we can see that we have this download memory leak GraphQL Apollo schema. So what this means is the service, the name of the service will be just part of the name of our Gradle function over here. Then we need to set the package name. And because this module is set in the main directory, as we can see, we're just passing the package name to it. But if it's in deeper layers, of course, we'll have them as well. Next, we need to create introspection and this will contain the information to where we can access our schema. What we're going to be using is the demo schema that's provided by Apollo, which is, this is the link to it, but you can find the full project in the description. So you can just get it from there if you are going to be using the same thing or just use yours. And then we're setting up the path to the schema where we want it to be downloaded. And again, because our module is in the main directory of the project, that's why we're setting it up like this. And the, what we want to achieve here is have our GraphQL folder next to the Android test and test folders, the same as uh, next to the main folder as well. If we actually sync the Gradle files right now, the folder will not appear. And that's because we have not added this part right here. But I mean, currently we do have it in the project, but you will not have it. So let me show you if we don't have this, when we're in our Android view, this folder will be hidden. Let's sync it and see. As we can see right now, we do have our GraphQL folder. That's why we need to put this source directory and we're just saying, you know, we want to show it in the Android view. So it's just easier to work with. And currently, like we see, it's being shown. When we go back down, we can just check the next part, which is sometimes when you have a schema, it requires you to download it some headers. Maybe you need an authentication key or whatever the case is, you might need to add them. So if you do, you just uncomment this or just, you know, put headers and you set up the key and the value. When we have everything done, we go to our Gradle and we go to the tasks, Apollo, and we have our task created. So. When we click on it, our schema should be downloaded. Like we see, it's success. And when we check here, we say that we have the schema. So this is just how you can make things easier for you because downloading schemas can be just annoying through the terminal. And when we have a task for Apollo, it's just so much easier. And this is the schema that we'll be working with in the future tutorials. This was it for the tutorial. I hope you liked it. And if it was helpful, please leave a like and subscribe for more.